Hi, you are watching Hiring for Executives webinar series part 4 on the topic of how to remove bias and make better hiring decisions. Hiring decision is the sixth step of the hiring process. The best practice hiring process starts with defining their role. Without a good role description, it's hard to know who you are looking for. Sourcing means compiling a long list of all the potential candidates who seem to match the role description. And screening is about finding out who might even be interested in being a candidate. Now you have a short list of people who are interested in being interviewed. Interviewing helps you to understand if the candidate has the necessary requirements and competencies to be successful in this role. And during reference check calls, you try to find out if what the candidate was saying is true. Now you have gathered a lot of information about the candidate and it's time to make the hiring decision. After the hiring decision, there's only one step left. You need to onboard the new hire successfully. Our main speaker today is Dennis. He has been a headhunter over 30 years and has established several companies in the professional services sector. Five years ago, he co-founded people analytics company Visneo, the SaaS platform that helps managers of all levels to make better hiring decisions. Before starting with the lecture, let's watch one video of how managers are making the hiring decision. Listen carefully and write down. What do you think of the situation in the video? What are the managers doing right or wrong? You can pause this video to look for a paper and pen to take notes. You can later compare your thoughts to the webinar participants' comments. I think Miriam is the best candidate for this role. I really like her energy and passion. No, I don't think she's mature enough to handle the challenges we face here. Yeah, I agree. With what? Uh, um, I mean, I like Miriam and I agree that this is a great challenge for her, so I'm not sure. Or, on the other hand, of course, a promotion has to be a stretch, so... Yeah, you see? Let's take Miriam. Yeah, but, but why? I, I really liked her energy and, and, and passion and she is really motivated. Okay, uh, and what about Daniela? Why don't we discuss her at all? No, 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 no. Why not? There's something wrong with her. What's wrong with her? Uh, not sure. Um, she reminds me of my head teacher from the secondary school. Um, the same agitated enthusiasm. Even the way her hair is put up reminds me really of that person. Um, not someone I feel comfortable with. I agree. With what? There is something. Uh, okay. Uh, and what about Hindrik? I don't think he has enough energy. And he has done it all. Will it be any challenge for him? Mm, uh, why did he apply? He just wants a job, that's all. Yes, and actually we have a job. No, no, no. We want someone passionate. Mm. That is so true. But passion is everything. Okay, what shall we conclude? Are we ready to make a decision or not? So, okay. what did we see here? Any, did we have any comments or does anyone want yes. to say something? Uh, there is a question from Marcus who is asking, is this really how the hiring decisions are made? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, many, many of them. And that's this, I, uh, the script is written from a real life. Mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. can you imagine what happened after that? As, as it wasn't a real situation, I know that finally Jack was guided to make a right decision. Mm -hmm, someone mm -hmm. says that I don't want to believe that it is so. This is sometimes reality out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is it is unfortunately yeah. it is, yes. There are a couple of people who also agree that Tanya is uh, saying that probably more often than we realize. Mm. And Allah wants to know if you have seen discussions like this in your experience. Absolutely, many of them. And uh, in a way, I used to, I used to some, somehow believe that, well, if, if they are very good candidates, then more, more or less you can decide on random. But mm -hmm. the more 
more I grew myself as, as a headhunter and, and professional in this field, I, I always see that even if you have five very good candidates, then you still have good and, and better choices. And uh, what we saw here was that the typical situation that people were declined on based on random reasons, like reminds me someone. This is a typical, very random reason, nothing to do with the job. Um, second, that people are taken in uh, for just uh, uh, liking. I like this person and then this call, this all this call, that energy and passion, this is typical buzzwords, which I use to rationalize your intuitive decisions made during the first two minutes of, of meeting them. Yeah, and, and Natalia has a very good, uh, good thought. Uh, she's saying that um, the person is no match and it will bring more cost for the entity for finding the replacement. So basically that probably you need to fire that person and find a new person afterwards if you make the decisions based on that. Absolutely, absolutely. This is, this is an expensive mistake if you make one and the mm -hmm. mistake quite common, that's right. I start about something basic. <laughs> it's a, I, I invented a decision of management, so what it is. So basically you, you hire the right people, you explain them what to do, and finally you just support and motivate them. It's no more things to, to, you need to do at all. It reminds me of, um, of a video Gordon Ramsay showed where somewhere where she t taught people to fry the fish. It was almost the same. Get a piece of very good fish, then season it a little bit with salt and pepper, and then put it in the right environment, meaning hot oil, and then don't touch it for a couple of minutes. It's the same with people. You don't need to touch them. You just support them a little bit. But uh, how well you season a piece of fish or uh, how good the oil is and the pan, if the fish was rotten or not the right piece anyway, you won't get a good food out of it. And with the management, it's the same. If the first step goes wrong, if the people are not right, you can do whatever, but you can't correct this first misfortune on the next stages. So that's uh, to, to prove once more that um, uh, hiring decisions are the most important management decisions, as these are the ones you just can't correct any else way than to just do it again. Everybody agrees that management decisions are the most important ones and everybody, everything depends on the people, but still they tend to make very bad decisions usually. First managers like to think that they are very good in making people decisions. And they also tend to think that strong managers uh, make the decisions quickly. Uh, actually, they haven't had any management courses uh, which teach them to hire. Um, I don't see there is anything on, about hiring in their curricula. And instead of that, there is lots of uh, the dysfunctional management folklore around, like fire fast, fire fast, for example, which I have written about. And finally, various biases. I mentioned already the, the age bias that uh, older people are, have less energy. And all this talk about good chemistry with candidate is just rationalizing the intuitive decision, which is based on pure, li pure liking and made usually in the first few minutes of the, um, of the interview. Barbara has one thought, I think that managers often hire their like minimis. Uh, this adjustment is often very accurate, but most likely not what is needed in the open position. Yeah, yes, the, the, the point is to know what you need and focus mm -hmm. on this. So not, uh, not hire the most likable person. Uh, 
uh, and but that's what happens if you do, if you're not very clear of what you need mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. in the essence what we are, are trying to uh, communicate with our webinars if you don't know what you need you select the most likable person probably a very nice person but uh, there was another person who wasn't so much like maybe mm -hmm. maybe he even would argue with you but maybe that's exactly what you need to improve your uh, your teamwork and and the quality of the work you do in your team just one uh, thing why it's easy to remember what triggers the um, uh, what triggers the quick decision I have written somewhere recently that um, uh, that it's um, like taking a fast food a, a hamburger instead of ordering or, or preparing a gourmet meal. Why do you do this? You, you, from the corner of the eye, some nice picture of a nice tasty hamburger send a signal to your brain, which says that you have an easy solution. You don't need to bother and you don't need to spend so much like, like in a gourmet restaurant. It's the same kind of situation in a way with a um, hiring situation where you meet new people you have never met. So actually you get lots of information about these people and most of this information is actually unnecessary. Most of this information is noise and what happens to your brain is that you get overloaded by information and then your defense mechanism, <laughs> it's a simplification, but uh, anything, anyway, your brain uh, suggests a simplifying solution, a solution that helps you to cope with this information overload. And this solution includes all kinds of um, um, stereotypes, simplifications, and um, and all the rest, which says you take this person, take this person <clears throat> who reminds you your friend, <coughs> who who seems smart, even smarter than your friend to be, because this guy didn't argue at all, and so on and so on, and um, forget all this uh, uh, time-consuming. Uh, procedures your consultant recommends, which sometimes uh, appear to be expensive as well. And if you do like this, you you get to hiring mistakes, which are actually much more common than you think. About 50% of the cases, if the hiring manager made a decision within 12 months, if asked again, they are not sure if they made the right decision. So we can say that this decision wasn't good enough. And even worse, in 90% of the cases, they don't act. They don't try, try to correct this mistake just because they would need to say that um, I made this mistake. Because the only person who can decide whether the mistake was right is the person who made the mistake initially. Now the solution how to make a good quality hiring decision. Uh, we have actually explained it in uh, all our uh, workshops or, or webinars uh, right now. So the, the solution is quite easy here. Find the right criteria for success in this role. So this was the first one which we covered in position mapping. So the right criteria is the the basis. Then evaluate each candidate according to each criteria. Not just evaluate candidates, but evaluate each candidate according to each criteria. And then finally, either you summarize or you take the averages of all the evaluations, then make the decision based on these evaluations. You have the temptation, even if you have done all this, to still uh, make the decision based on your gut feeling. Because it sometimes uh, looks so obvious. But do bring your gut feeling in only after you have uh, calculated what decision you should make based on the evaluations. 
So let's do a quiz. What do, what do you think about this uh, intuition's place in, um, in making hiring decisions? So more or less 50-50, a little bit more than uh, people believe that intuition has a role. Okay, let me show you the, the Daniel Kahneman's um, research data about this. What the hard science says about it is that if you have done your evaluations uh, according to the criteria, so you mean you remember like criteria which define success in this role or predict success in, in this role you are selecting for. If you have done this evaluations and then you do the exercise like what Daniel Kahneman actually uh, thought this exercise to please their, uh, their recruiters there that now close your eyes and you imagine this candidate as being the officer in Israeli Defense Forces. And you rate this person from five to one, five being excellent officer and one not suitable at all. And uh, what uh, was found out is that if this kind of exercise, this closing your eyes and thinking and rating intuitively was done after they have completed their evaluations. Uh, the summary was almost the same as, as summarizing the, the evaluation results. But if done without, even if the evaluators who did this intuitive exercise were very experienced persons in this work, it wasn't uh, correlated at all with the success of the selected people becoming officers. So use your intuition, but only after you have made your evaluations. So, and now finally, if we summarize how to do the good hiring decision, you have to make a scorecard. Well, there is a list of all candidates and list of all evaluations, meaning all evaluations according to all criteria. And then make a decision. The easy solution is to take the one with the highest score. And that's it. Okay, let's kind of make an example. Let's kind of show how a scorecard could look like and uh, how you can use it. But before we're going to jump into the scorecard, maybe not everyone has seen Visnia. So, Denise, can you say a couple of words about Visnia before we go into more details? Yeah, this is, this is the Visnia organization that our organization, actually it's the organization of uh, Mirels, but if you just show us one test, hiring flow, it would be helpful. So this is this hiring flow in on Visnia platform, which helps you today to, to make a hiring decision in a professional way. <clears throat> it starts uh, from position mapping on the left hand side, and then it goes to shortlist, where you can present the candidates in an in interactive way. Uh, then there is interview and evaluation module where you can uh, the, the system generates according to the to the position map. It generates the interview um, questions and evaluation form, and then based on this, you are generated then uh, a scorecard where you can compare candidates and uh, basically make your decision. I'm going to quickly show one thing before we jump there. So people would just understand how those evaluations uh, actually ended up on the scorecard. So this is the interview and evaluate guide. Uh, and as you can see, uh, I, in this case, and another evaluator have already put in the scores based on each uh, criteria. Mm -hmm. So you can, again, see how we did it um, in a previous webinar series. But this is how the scores uh, end up on the scorecard. So you can add scores and I've added a little bit thoughts why I think and why I rated this person uh, requirement match with a four and etc. 
And you also maybe noticed that uh, there are some comments which are written down during the interview, and there are some mm -hmm. comments which come from uh, reference checks. Mm -hmm. So basically, the the ev evaluation sheet or evaluation um, uh, guide is is generated both for an interview and for a reference check. So also. Also, reference check has to be kind of structured and direct, directed to the same requirements and qualities you want to evaluate in the person. Otherwise, it's just a chat which doesn't give you much help in uh, mm -hmm. making a decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we jump to compare. And this is uh, an example of how a scorecard you know, could look like. This is how it looks in Visnia. So, Dennis, we have three candidates and we have two um, e evaluators who have uh, given their input. Ideally, there could be more if there were four people uh, as stakeholders participating in um, in the search. All of those people could um, like give their evaluation. But then it's what we can now do uh, with this information, even if people like make their own scorecards at home, how you can use it. First, I would like to you pay you you to pay attention that there are three kinds of requirements on the left hand column. First, mm -hmm. there are position requirements. Uh, there is two of them here. Uh, second, there are differentiating competences. Uh, which are the ones which help you to differentiate between good and excellent candidates. And finally, you have uh, data about behavioral di diversity. And this is something which comes from the Visneo platform. If you put uh, your candidates through the Visneo, they are directed to some questionnaires, which are ideally the same, which already your team has uh, filled in. So you can also see how, how well they're fit with the team is, how, how good they are in adding diversity or how, how well they fit with the team culture, with the, uh, with the values of other people uh, have in this team. Mm -hmm. So, but then um, the easy solution, like I said, is if you scroll down, you, you see a total score and mm -hmm. you see it. One candidate is uh, scoring more in total score than others. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you do it by the book, if, if your criteria were right, if you did your best to evaluate them in a right way, then you should just take the, the person with the highest score. Uh, Jonathan is asking about how do we like define the behavioral diversity? Thank, he, you. He... Thank you. Thank you. This is a good question. Behavioral diversity is uh, the differ difference in personality traits. So what we know about high-performing teams, we have done quite a bit of research. Actually, we know all everything which is which has the science knows about high-performing teams. And what we know is that high-performing teams are similar in values and diverse in everything else. And if we think of everything else, we tend to look at uh, deep level diversity, which is how different personalities are in this team. For example, it is well known that if there is a bunch of extroverts or very social people in a team, or it's a bunch of introverts, uh, kind of people who want to work on their own, both of these options are not as good as a team where we have both extroverts and introverts. So the, the, the uh, team is diverse in extroversion scale. And we, we have like um, several scales where we measure this beha behavioral diversity. And we say that behavioral diversity makes team more agile and potentially more high performing. So you said that about the scores that the best would be to make this decision that this is the highest score. So let's take this candidate. What if people feel that, because right now everything gives like equally the points. What if, even though this candidate has a higher score, I feel so, that 
basically, like I said, if if the hiring manager and maybe someone else has done this um, ratings, mm -hmm. they can of course they can overrule. Okay. For example, they can notice that we we have two places where we have this this exclamation marks. That means basically that we have two evaluators who have been here who have evaluated these candidates are um, having quite different opinions so mm -hmm. maybe we want to discuss this for example uh, emily has uh, rated uh, this competency ensuring accountability uh, with five points from five and mirel has rated them to on 2.5 so basically why don't you discuss with Emily before making your final um, mm -hmm. final uh, mind? Mm -hmm. If you, Mirel, are the, are the one who makes the, um, the hiring decision, then mm -hmm. or you can you can also decide that well, I know better than Emily. You just exclude Emily's opinion here. Okay. Or you okay. might uh, want to ask Emily. So uh, how did you how did you uh, uh, why, what is your rating based? Mm -hmm. And Emily might, uh, might want to change uh, the rating, or you might want to change after you hear what Emily says. Okay. And the okay. same with the other one, actually. Mm -hmm. here. The same okay. with the other one, attention to detail. It's, it's, uh, these evaluations are not opinions. They should mm -hmm. be based on, on data. And uh, you you can both present your data. What is the data you 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 made your uh, evaluations on? And mm -hmm. and maybe you want to adjust and you you want to agree. And and still, uh, the hiring manager can uh, decide that that the weight of uh, of some of the criteria is much higher mm -hmm. than uh, than some of the others. So I can choose that even though. Um... He has the highest score. I feel that this requirement is actually the one that you know is most important for us. So we can choose that because yeah. he she yes. is best in it and very close to the other score. We feel still feel that this person is uh, like right for the role. Yeah, and and finally, of course, this is this is another option which which always is there. If you still if still in doubt. Mm -hmm. Try to think of something which helps you to gather some additional information. Mm -hmm. Maybe a maybe a task you want to uh, ask those two two people. You obviously want to exclude one here, but then two mm -hmm. of them are, are much closer to to the uh, to the finalist's position. Uh, maybe you want to ask them both to uh, solve some problem, which is an actual problem in your work in your uh, agenda right now and and come back and discuss and then you see with whom you you get on better terms and so on mm -hmm. is it also okay that if i feel that there may be questions extra questions or like extra things i want to ask is it okay in this stage to make another like short even maybe a phone interview with those two to get to gather more oh, absolutely and you, you can do you can do both you can do mm -hmm. both another interview and ask them to 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 make maybe a task, maybe mm -hmm. spend a couple of hours. I wouldn't think you, you can ask to spend days without uh, uh, doing a free work for you, but a couple mm -hmm. of hours at this stage might be quite, quite okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also ask uh, for another call with the, with the reference person and, and mm -hmm. discuss something specific. So all this is, a, is appropriate. Uh, this um, system, this scorecard, doesn't make the decision on behalf of you. You are the one who makes the decision. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, you can contact us at support at visnio.com.